Hi, I'm Andy Kinder. Today you join me at the fabulous Glebe Fishery here near Mallory Park in Leicestershire, where today we're going to show you probably a little tactic that's really overlooked in the current scheme of things we match fishing, and it's cage feeders. Cage feeders are the only feeder that's allowed on this complex, but you can go to any venue throughout the country and catch carp fishing just this way I'm going to tell you all today. So let's get some bait on, let's get out there and let's see what we can catch for you. Right, well, fishing the cage feeder, it really couldn't be any simpler, more straightforward, easy way of fishing. Far, far easier to load than, you know, any type of method feeder, any pellet feeder, whatever. It's, you know, they, they were some of the first feeders out on the market. And like I said, right at the very, very beginning of, the, of this intro, it's a forgotten art when catching carp on commercials or even catching any particular fish, bream or whatever. So I'm gonna load my feeder up I'm going to get it across to that far bank and yeah, far bank, you know what I'm saying. Here we are today at Mallory Park. We're on a typical strip lake. It's pool seven what we're on. And you actually look at the venue and as I'm looking straight out here, there's no actual features. It's pretty long and straight and featureless. But, but that far bank is a key fish holding feature. And I consider venues like this very, very much like canals. You know, this bank, the margins, the far bank are the main areas. And that little bit down the middle, it's a little bit of no man's land. So I'm gonna be clipping up tight across to that far bank. And when I mean tight, I'm, I'm dropping it literally inches from that far bank coverage because that's where them carp wanna be. They want, to be, they want to be cruising up and down that far bank, picking bits of stuff up, what gets dropped in from the bank. And uh, if I can put my feet away in inches of that far bank, it's going to go round straight away. So let's see how we go. Right, so we, uh, we've loaded the feeder up, pack it in quite tightly, but what I'm, what I'm hoping to do, I'm hoping to get that little bit of a cloud bits of ground bait falling off. I've got empen casters in there. There's bits of them falling out. And realistically, I'm wanting to try and catch them pretty quick as soon as it's gone in. So I'm building my peg up. I'm, I'm making that feeder land with a nice little plop into that far bank and casting regular every two minutes. And it, it's building up that column of bait going through the water, the noise factor feeding fish which encourages more feeding fish into it so here we go hit the clip i don't know whether you've actually picked up the uh, the plopper it going in but this type of fishing and fishing it quickly is all about it's all about the plop on the feed it's oh there we go there we go Never even got it on rest. Never even got it on rest. Obviously, like I was saying, it's gone in. There's bits of ground bait falling off. There's little bits of hemp and casters falling out all the time. Maggots on the hook. I don't think you can actually beat maggots for this type of fishing. Um, but, the, you know, there's nothing to stop you fishing. A little wafter, a wowser, things like that. You know, by all means do that. But maggots in conjunction with hemp, casters, ground bait. I just think you're onto a winner. Plus, the, the sheer beauty of them is they fall through the water a lot slower than what a wafter or anything like that does. So the key is to try and get them competing for food in that column of eight, what you're chucking in. And what I will say, the probably, you know, the, the more times you cast them, the more times you're actually Putting that bait through the water, you're encouraging fish to feed all the time. Yep, 
Here he comes. Obviously didn't want to play first time, did it? But here we go. Not massive, five pound, but a proper weight builder. And if you're going to catch one of these every chuck, you're soon going to be a match winner. Let's put him back. Right, so that's really the cut and thrust it. Let me talk you through how we do the setup, how we hook the bait, how we load the feeder, and more importantly, how we put that cast right into that zone with them feeding fish feeding. All right, let's talk you through the setup, and it couldn't be any easier, really, to set this up. Rod-wise, I've got the 10-foot MVR M2 carp feeder rod. For this type of fishing, for this type of distance, what we what we cast in, the 10 foot is absolutely perfect. I will go as far as to say the 10 foot would suit the majority of commercials, fisheries up and down the country. If you want, if you've got light shorter chucks, it's available in nine foot. The slightly longer chucks, it's available in 11 foot. So you've got the perfect rod to suit every scenario on every commercial up and down length and breadth of the country not a problem so it's great i've got the ounce tip in it's the lightest tip what i've got in here because i do want to see those slight indications liners to prove that there's some fish in my peg real wise it's matched up with the mvr 4000 reel plenty of cranking power on that because you know it's a fast way of fishing we're fishing it fast, we're casting regular, you want that winding power and uh, the MVR 4000 just suits the rod perfect, absolutely spot on. Line wise, 024 MVR carp feeder mono, again it's, it's got a breaking strain of probably 10-11 pound, it's really really strong and I get loads of people ask me questions about line, why do you use one so strong? Well the last thing I want is a mainline breakage middle of a match or middle of a session when I'm catching a lot of fish and it's gonna let me down so O24 if I were proper proper bagging I'd look at the O26 but the 024 is an absolute perfect mono for this type of fishing sinks well it's abrasive resistant you couldn't ask for a better real mono Right, we come down to the actual setup itself. We've got the new MVR cage feeders on it, a 20 gram large, loads and loads of different sizes throughout the range and different uh, weights which can go on them. It'll, there's a feeder to literally suit every, uh, every occasion what you could use, right from really tiny micro ones right up to the extra large ones. Uh, uh, they cast superb, I must say. Uh, they're quite they're, they're a weirdy shape they're round but they've got like a flattish type bottom on it it's i'm not going to say a d shape because they're not actually a d shape but they've got that they've got that flatter bottom which i think for this type of fishing when you're holding it on a ledge or holding it up to an island it gives you that it gives you that little bit of holding power onto that ledge and also with them being that shape they cast so straight the straightness which they actually cast and go into the water is absolutely superb now glebe fishery uh, you do not have to fish a, a free running feeder so i've actually got a fixed feeder on today which i will show you my setup uh, it's just a link swivel which i atta uh, attach the feeder to then i attach the hook length to that uh, I've got a 20 inch hook length because that's the rules on here. You can't use anything less than a 20 inch hook length. A 20 inch hook length of MVR rig mono, 020. I'm taking no prisoners. You know my saying, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. And uh, the gear, when you're doing this type of fishing, 
takes a serious amount of abuse. So again, I want an up length that's not going to let me down. And when the bikes become, you get the bikes quickly, they're not inspected, they're not inspecting the line, they're not inspecting the hook. So you want some, again, what's not going to let me down. Yes, you will get breakages because fishing across the far bank, there's, there's reeds, there's brambles and things like that. So you are going to get breakages, but I want to try and cut down on as many physical breakages as I can. Hook wise, it's a size 14, uh, power carp one from the MVR range. Again, a big hook, a strong hook, but I know one that's not gonna let me down. And onto that, I'm putting three maggots. Three maggots so they can just gently drift through that water in the upper catching them on the drop. And that's my setup. It's as easy as that, and it will catch you any carp or bream on any commercial fishery throughout the country. Casting, it's all important that we've got to put it into the same place. And you can see I'm casting across to that far bank. I've actually clipped up, but one little tip for you. Always make sure you clip up by putting a bomb on. So right at the very, very start of the session, I've put my link swivel on, I've clipped a bomb to it, and I've had some exploratory casts to get me into the same place. It's impossible, it's impossible to clip up putting a feeder on because they don't fly straight without any bait. You don't want to be losing 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of the match clipping up again it right. It gives you some type of idea when you've got the bomb on. Then when you start fishing, you can adjust it to suit perfectly that it's going to be dropping in that right place every time. And a few little tips about casting. I'm gonna load the feeder up, especially with this longer hook length. You know, the longer hook length, when you're casting to a feature, creates people loads and loads and loads of problems. And there's a simple way around it. And I get asked the question all, all the time. So you can see I've got quite a long drop, basically from my hand, like that. I've got quite a long drop because when I'm gonna cast that feeder in, I'm not actually throwing it like a dart at that far bank, I'm actually giving it a little bit of air so it's going up and in like that which is the the perfect way to get the perfect noise of the feeder we go up hit the clip as easy as that you need to be hitting the clip while your feeder is still just in mid-air or just as it's about to land it needs to be hitting the clip you hit the clip and gradually follow it in and that way, that way, your feeder will be landing in the same place. You're not getting the hook lens uh, caught up in the far bank. And it's the perfect way to cast in. And that were a foul hooker. <laughs> I'll talk you through it again. Put some more bait on. So always, always allow yourself a bit of a drop from the tip because it makes the rod work. The rod's actually casting the feeder, not you. And we're coming back, point where we want it, up in the air, hit the clip, plop. It's all about the plop with this feeder. It's all about the plop as it lands in the water. You don't want to land in the water like a suitcase that just fell out in a plane or somebody chucking an anvil in or something like that. You know, it needs to go in with that nice sort of delicate plop because then fish get used 
they get used to the noise of that going in. And the last thing you want is one what's like literally crashing in uh, the water. Just don't, just don't do any favours for you. Simple, straightforward bait today. It's, it, it's really as easy as you can get it. I've got some dead maggots for the oak. I've got a mixture of reds, whites. There's the odd yellow one in there. Should I want to change or different to three reds? I can put a couple of reds in a white or something like that. So dead maggots, keep them in a little bit of water. They'll stay fresh all day. My actual feed or bait I'm putting in my feeder. I've got a mixture of hemp, casters and a few micro pellets. Uh, the micro pellets, like a good holding bait, casters they absolutely love. Emp, when they get crunching on that and start feeding on that and you know, bait can sometimes be expensive but you know by mixing a pint of casters in with a pint of emp and a pint of micro pellets you've got three pints of loose offerings there which you can gradually put through the feeder all day. And a little tip, when you're doing this type of fishing people say to me, well why don't you keep it in water? Right. The key to, if you were to put that mix in water and then start to plug it with ground bait, the consistency of the ground bait goes horrible and it comes out and it's not right and whatever. So try and keep them dry as best you can so your casters aren't floating. And then it's plugged with ground bait either side. So it's just a case of scooping the mix through my feeder. It's dry, my hands are dry on that. And then we just plug the feeder just like so and away we go and it's as easy as that you can fish quick it puts you a lot of fish on the bank let's get out there hit the clip The end of a brilliant. Oh, trying to knock me out, look, look The end of a fantastic cage feeder fishing session for carp. We've had a brilliant day here at Glebe on such, I'm going to say, a forgotten, a forgotten tactic. Calm down. I'm going to say a forgotten tactic in probably modern match fishing or angling words. Feisty one, this one, isn't it? So, yeah, a great tactic and one what's definitely, definitely not used often enough in, in angling. And like I say, it can put you together a massive, massive bag of fish. And uh, there we have him, proper big scaly mirror to finish on. Let's put him back. Hope you've learnt a few things from our uh, day here at the Glebe. Take them to your own commercial fisheries, take them to your own normal fisheries. Fish it like that, nice, quick, easy, simple, and it'll bag you loads and loads of fish. So until next time, I'll catch you on the bank. Tight lines. Yeah.